Whether you are part of our church family or you just found us on the net today, welcome friends. We're glad that you're here. I'm Russell and I serve as pastor of the church charge of Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Bennett, North Carolina and the Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church in Seagrove, North Carolina. We are glad that uh, and thankful that you've stopped by to worship with us today. Uh, one announcement as we begin today, uh, our Pastor Parish Relations Committee church team is meeting this afternoon at two o'clock. We're beginning to have that conversation about reopening the church. Uh, there are two questions that we are going to be looking real hard at this afternoon, and we covet your prayers. The first of those questions is when. Obviously, that's on everybody's mind. When should we reopen, and uh, should it be with, as I said, just the front porch worship or out in the cemetery yard, um, or should it be in person or a combination, ease from one into the other? Second question that we're going to be looking at is what? What can we do with our worship space that will make it a safe worship space for everybody? We invite your comments. We invite uh, your ideas, suggestions. Um, I invite you, if you're a member of the church or somebody that frequently worships with our church, to um, talk to the members of this committee team. Uh, their names are in the bulletin that was sent to you on email today. For our worship today, we're going to be looking at uh, the first book in the Bible, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 13, uh, chapter 13 rather, and uh, the message is entitled, Saddle Up. It's an exhortation really to a Christian lifestyle as an adventure. Today is much more of a Bible study than it is a uh, sermon. Uh, because we are really in an adventure right now, aren't we, with the COVID virus and all that's uh, uh, associated with it. So just a few heads up for worship today. We're going to be having a message for the children in just a, a few moments. And uh, if you need to prepare, uh, I would suggest you go get your Bible. And so hit the pause button first, go get your Bible, maybe that cup of coffee that you'd like to get. And uh, when we come back, we'll worship together. Hi kids, Pastor Russell back here again. We have a message this morning from Genesis chapter 12 about the great adventure that a fellow by the name of Abram, he was later called Abraham, uh, Abram and his family experienced this great adventure together. One of the things that you might not know about me is that I am a huge Indiana Jones fan. I love every movie that Harrison Ford ever starred in where uh, Indiana Jones is the chief character. And he went on a great adventure, lots of great adventures, didn't he? I mean, the Temple of Doom and the Last uh, Crusade. I mean, Indiana Jones was all about adventure. He got himself onto the adventure road and got himself in and out of lots of problems all the time. But it was always action, 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 lots of adventure. Well, there is another adventure that I want to talk to you about this morning. And it's real short talk this morning. It's the great adventure of your life with Jesus. When you accept Jesus as your savior and he comes to walk with you on your great adventure through life, he's going to show you some really great things. So let me encourage you. Uh, stay tuned and listen to the message a little bit further. We're going to talk about the great adventure. Let's pray first. Father, we're thankful for the great adventure of our lives with you. We're thankful, Lord, that you died for us on the cross, uh, that we might be forgiven of our sins. We pray that as our great adventure begins with you by accepting you as our Savior and Lord, that you'll continue to show us these great adventures throughout of our life. Help us, Lord, to worship you and to live our lives for you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
The sermon is entitled, Saddle Up, Bible study really. Uh, I want to give an exhort, exhortation today to embrace life as a Christian adventure. Uh, a lot of people in the world today, or certainly uh, folks that you know and I know, we kind of feel like we're in the middle of an adventure with all that's going on in the world with the COVID virus and all of that. And uh, I know folks who are not afraid at all, and I know folks who are very afraid of what's going on, uh, fear for their very lives. Well, some fear is healthy. Starbuck in Moby Dick said to his prospective crew that we're going to go hunt whales, he said, I'll have no man in my boat who is not afraid of a whale. But some fear is not so healthy. I'm thinking of Nelson Price. Uh, Nelson Price had a very short football career one night in a college game. Nelson scooped up a fumble and looked down the field. They were on the five yard line defending against a touchdown and the, and the runner fumbled the ball and he picked it up and uh, he looked up and he saw a clear field 95 yards away to run for a touchdown. And so he ran for everything he was worth. He looked over his shoulder and uh, as he was running and he saw a shadow on this side, but there was nobody there. And so as he ran further, he looked over on this side, it was another shadow. He figured he was gonna be tackled almost immediately. And so he cut to his left and then he swerved to the right, dodged with all of his best moves, made it 95 yards and scored a touchdown. And when he looked back, there was not a single person closer than 50 yards away. It seems that that night the lights shining from both sides had cast a shadow on both sides of him. And so Nelson Price had put all of his best moves on his own shadow for 95 yards. Well, I'm thinking that it might have been that way for Abram. In the waning moments of the early morning darkness, Abram could have seen lots of shadows when that voice first spoke to him out of the darkness. The Lord told Abram, leave your country, your relatives, and your father's house and go to the land that I'll show you. God had something really great in store for Abram and his descendants. It all started with a man who was obedient to listen to that urging of God, not to the shadows, to saddle up. How do you feel about saddling up? How do you feel about being a trailblazer? What if God called you to leave the comfort and the security of your country? your family, your father's house, your cousins, your uncles, grandma and grandpa, smooth roads, huge shopping malls, McDonald's, uh, Pizza Hut, satellite TV, uh, 400 channels on that TV too, showers with water pressure, uh, microwave ovens, honest police officers, business opportunities, plush carpeting, padded pews, multi-million dollar buildings. What if God said, get out? Let it go. You go. Suppose you got a phone call from NASA. <laughs> You've been chosen to live on the space station. Your task is to saddle up, and go on a great adventure different than anything you'd ever known. What would you do? What would you do? If you're like me, you'd probably say, I'm not made to live in space and it's dangerous out there. And people have died out there. And besides, I like it here. <laughs> but has God ever shown you the road to a great adventure? Just what does that kind of a road look like? What I'd like for us to do is saddle up and see. First of all, it's a road that only God can show you. In your life, either you lead or God leads. In the sixth grade, long before Mrs. Preacher came along, um, some girl tried to teach me to dance. And she kept saying, no, 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 let me show you. You do it this way. And I kept saying to her, but I'm the boy. <laughs> I lead. Well, I never did learn to dance very well. Most of the times I've ever messed up in the life were the times when I wanted to get away from God's leading in my life. Sometimes I wanted to lead. I'm the guy. I lead. Sometimes the way that God calls us to the road is not only unfamiliar. Sometimes it's just downright scary frightening, like a COVID virus. It changes everything, but it's a road that God shows you. Secondly, it's also a road away from the familiar. Abram, who would later be named Abraham, lived a settled, safe, safe life in Ur of the Chaldees. His family was prominent. He was 
very rich. Life was very good for Abram. What God called him to was the life of a nomad. No home, no guaranteed water stops in the desert, no protection from scavenging thieves. But what he could count on was sand in absolutely everything as they moved about the desert. Sand in their ears, sand in their eyes, sand up the nose, sand in the hair and the teeth, and in their grits. And that unfamiliar sand, sand out there would provide plenty of shadows, the unknowns. You know, most of the things that we fear in life are those things that we've never faced or will ever face. We hold back because we fear. I wanted to stay in the, in the second grade. Ms. Ms. Stefano was my first love. She smelled good and boy, was she pretty. I liked the second grade. The only reason I went to the third grade is because Ms. Stefano became Mrs. Richardson just before second grade ended. Imagine that. I mean, I would have told her she didn't need a guy named Richardson. I would have married her. I mean, but she wouldn't wait. Imagine. But the real reason that I wanted to stay in second grade was because Ms. Stefano made it safe and happy and fun. That was a familiar place. It was fun. It was easy to handle. Second grade was a good place for Russell that year, but it wasn't the best place for me to stay. God leads us away from the familiar because sometimes the great adventure beyond the familiar holds not only the good place, but it holds the best place. 1980 was like that for us. Our little band of Russell, Elizabeth, Jason, Jennifer, and Carrie packed up our U-Haul and two cars and all the furniture we had was stuffed in that U-Haul, every possession in life, and we went to seminary. And trust me, New Orleans was another world from what we'd known. We didn't know a single person there, and we didn't know how we would live or how we would eat or anything else. All we had was a letter of acceptance from the Dean of Students. God sent us, and we left everything behind that was familiar, and we traveled away. It was a great adventure. It still is unfolding 40 years later, and it is in second grade, I guarantee you. It's also a road of reward, this great adventure road, the road of reward we may not see. And in chapter 12 of Genesis, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I'm going to give this land to your offspring. And Abram built an altar there to commemorate the Lord's visit. Adoniram Judson was a great missionary. He once said about serving God and success, you know, that reward thing. He said, there's no success without sacrifice. If you succeed without sacrifice, it's because someone has suffered before you. If you sacrifice without success, it's because someone will succeed after you. Very often on the road to the great adventure, we're called upon to make great sacrifices. I think God did that too, didn't he? His sacrifice had a name. His name was Jesus. Whenever members of the body of Christ are called upon to make sacrifice and they step up and they place their offerings on the altar, only eternity will really reveal the depth of those sacrifices. But make no mistake about this. Those who sacrifice the greatest will reap the most out of this life of adventure. And then notice also that it's a road of tents and altars. In verse eight, it says, after that, Abram traveled southward and set up camp in the hill country between Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar and worshiped the Lord. Set up tents, worship the Lord. I heard, I have heard very well-meaning Christian believers sometimes say to people that they were hoping to lead to Christ, that they hoped would accept Christ, that following Jesus is a life of joy. Check. That following Jesus is a life of peace. Check. That following Jesus is a life of having all your problems solved. Uh, what? I mean, come on, that dog could not find a trail to hunt if it was chained to it. In fact, that is just plain untrue. All your problems don't get solved when you start following Jesus. The fact is, many start arriving after you make the decision to follow Jesus. The life of a nomad is filled 
with difficulties. The Great Adventure Road is filled with difficulties. When you live in a tent, when you're ready to move, whenever the leader says go, you're likely to have the roof on your tent leak. <laughs> you're likely to have the wind blow down your canvas walls. On the other hand, altars are strong places built for worship. It's where you meet God. Tents are portable. You put up uh, you put down a, a very few long-lasting pegs in the sand when you have when you live in a tent. However, everything in life that is truly precious, can we think worship, is portable. Your relationships are portable for here and for eternity. Your service for God is portable, and your soul is portable and transportable to heaven when you die. So on this road, you build strong altars for God. You just set up tent camps for your stuff. And then also it's a road that's easy to wander off. Boy, don't we know this. In verses 10 through 13 of our text, we read this. At that time, there was a severe famine in the land. Nothing like a little shortage, uh, like COVID shortage of toilet paper and uh, all that other stuff that we're missing in the stores. Nothing like a shortage that'll make you get off the road to the great adventure. Abram went down to Egypt to wait it out. And as he was approaching, see that Abram was uh, quarantined as well, wasn't he? As he was approaching the borders of Egypt, Abram said to Sarai, his wife, you're a very beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they'll say, this is his wife. Let's kill him. Then we can have her. But if you say to them that you're my sister, then the Egyptians will treat me well because of their interest in you, and they will spare my life. One of the things I really love best about the Bible is that it gives you a complete picture. Abram was a man of God. He was not God. And Abram was not perfect. I mean, you and I both know that he was not perfect, and we are not perfect. If you fail to saddle up for this great adventure, though, because you don't know if you can actually stay on the road, you don't think that you're built to handle the road, then you've missed the point entirely. Every one of us hits the ditch from time to time. When we first arrived in North Carolina 20 years ago this year, Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth, my dear wife, found every ditch on the side of every road between our home and the Oak Hollow Mall. <laughs> That did not stop her from going to the Ocala Mall. She stayed on that road. Beloved, if you get on the road, God will help you with your predisposition to wander off the road and into the ditch. That's why you have a good shepherd who looks after you. And then notice lastly, if you will, that it's a road that leads back to vows, not visions. Uh, Continuing in the text, Pharaoh then sent them out of the country, Abram and his wife and all of their entourage, under armed escort. Abram and his wife with all their household and belongings. So they left Egypt and traveled north into the Negev, Abram with his wife and Lot and all that they owned, for Abram was very rich in livestock, silver and gold. Then they continued traveling by stages toward Bethel to the place between Bethel and Ai where they had camped before. This was the place where Abram had built the altar and there he again worshiped the Lord. Boy, the point could not be clearer. Sooner or later, everything comes down to and back to the vows you make to God. The circle is complete. The vow, for instance, you make to Jesus to love and to follow him comes back to you in assurance and peace and an eternity to be close to the one that you followed and that you loved. The vow that you made to give to others so that others can hear about Jesus comes back to you in abundance. Jesus said it would be 30-fold, 60-fold, in some cases 100-fold. And the vow that you make to God to share Christ daily with others who need to know Jesus, that comes back to you too. And sometimes it's in the form of having relatives and friends and loved ones and neighbors that you just can't seem to reach. But your faithfulness in reaching others, or at least trying to reach others, comes back in the form of others reaching the loved ones that you can't reach. And eventually it all comes back, all comes full cycle to the echo of the Heavenly Father saying over all of it, 
Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the rest of your master. So every road that you follow, every place that you go, every place that God sends you becomes a small place sooner or later, as it did for Abram. It became a six foot by six foot by six foot place. Genesis 25 and verse 8 says, He died a ripe old age, joining his ancestors in death. For Abram, soon to become Abraham, there were detours and plenty of bumps, and there are for you and I. But the road led, and God led, and Abraham came home, and we're still talking about his great adventure today. Abraham followed God, and Jesus invites you to do the same thing. The question before the house today is not for Abram. The question is for you, and the question is for me. And it goes something like this. There's a great adventure in God's kingdom for everyone. Are you going to sit there or are you going to saddle up? Let's pray. Father God, we praise you for letting us look over at Abraham's shoulder at that road of great adventure. We praise you even more that we know that you call us to follow and to be close to you. You are so gracious and you walk this road with us to show us the way to open up the doors of opportunity to be your children on mission. We know how frail our hearts and our minds and our sense of worth can be. Thank you for your promise of strength as the journey demands. Help us, Lord, to honor you with readiness to saddle up when you call and be a light for your word in this generation, in this world. For the glory and the honor and the praise to which you alone are worthy, O oh Lord, we pray in the name of the Son, cooperating with the Spirit to honor and lift up the majesty of the Father. Let it be so in each of our lives. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. God bless you. Come again.